Yeah. Here we are. La la la. Can you get me a cold drink, please? Hello. Um, here we are again, once again. Um, so, uh, a couple of apologies first. Yesterday morning, I tried to do a. I tried to do the next step on the Airfix 124 scale Spitfire. Um, unfortunately, we had problems with our network yesterday. Virgin were outside somewhere doing something, and it kept dropping out. I had three attempts at uh, doing this and it just, you know, I, I'd get 10 minutes in and it'd just drop out and left people wondering where I'd gone. Um, so obviously my apologies for that is out of my control. That is out of my control. Um, so uh, there's a little bit more been done to the Spitfire that's not been um, video broadcast because obviously... There's a small amount of time I didn't realize uh, we were not on air. Um, and because, uh, as a direct result, because of that, um, yesterday I was fiddling around with the settings, and then uh, out of the blue, my dad rang me and asked me whether I wanted to go and see uh, the Equalizer 2 at the cinema, um, and I did. Uh, but unbeknown to me i'd left the i'd left the settings to broadcast a hangout at um around i don't know seven eight o'clock i guess it will have been um fortunately angela was here and saw the announcement go out that i was about to go live <laughs> and i'm at the cinema um so uh, I believe she went into the room and explained that uh, it was a complete cock-up. Um, so, again, sorry for that. But uh, we should be back on track now. Um, hi, uh, another Mark there, Mark II. Um, awesome name. I do to say that. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so today we're doing a uh, live review. And... Um, I was just reading, I was reading this on a forum this morning that um, there's people that don't like these uh, long reviews. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes tops is what they really want to see on uh, reviews, anything more, and they're not interested. Um, so, you know, um, I don't know. Mine are, mine are longer than that, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, people that follow me know that mine are longer than that. They're normally about 10 to 15 minutes just get at the beginning going through the, the information and that. So, you know, um, let me know in the comments below if you think they are too long. Uh, if you think they're too long, let me know. But instead of just saying, yes, they're too long, um, tell me which pieces we could perhaps leave out. Um, and then maybe, you know, I can look at that and, and move forward from there. But unless I get an overwhelming um, amount of people that all come on and say, oh, yeah, you've got to, you know, get rid of this, get rid of that, then uh, it's pretty much going to stay the way it is. Um, so um, without further ado, we are, of course, uh, looking at the uh, Revel. Um, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Dassault Rafal C. Assault Raphael C. Um, I'm not, don't, uh, uh da, 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 multi purpose fighter. Oh, so it's for the uh, French Air Force, um, deployed in Afghanistan and Libya. Libya, sorry, uh, two pylons with six GBU bombs on, um, six guided GBU, 12 bombs, detailed. Cockpit, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, so nice artwork on the front. I picked this because it's got the Arctic tiger. Um, and uh, Angela loves tigers. So that was partly the decision behind that. It looks a lovely little plane as well. Um, and uh, obviously, 
it's not the plane's fault that it's French. I shouldn't have said that. Scrub that. Um, and there we go. So uh, we'll go. There's not much else on the box, really. There's some little pictures on the back of, of what's going to, you know, a little bit, little bit of information there uh, somewhere round about. I can't remember where. Somewhere on there. Um, so well, a little bit about the history of the kit. Um, let's bring that down so we can have a look at it. And uh, so this kit actually is based on um, the uh, Dassault Rafale M, uh, which came with a bomb rack. Uh, that kit number, if you want that one, was 87257. And that came out in um, around 2008. Uh, maybe 2007, 2008. This kit is based on that. But just to let you know, this kit started life uh, in 1990. It was a Heller kit. Um, they used it for a few years, um, and then it went to. Then it came over to Revel in 1999. Um, Revel have had the uh, license for it pretty much ever since, uh, but it's also been made by. Um, Hobby Boss, Hasegawa, uh, Ace Corporation, and Multi, Multi, Multi Favel Models. I can't see what that says. Must have models, sorry. <laughs> Multi Favel Models. <laughs> Must have models. Um, it's it's been with all of them companies. Uh, same same kit, uh, but Revel of of. Owned it uh, throughout, really, and I guess they've licensed it out to them. Um, I, you know, there's so many new parts here, new parts there. Rebox, uh, rebox in mid 2007. Um, new decals in 2010. Uh, more new decals in 2011. Again in 2011, a new box in late 2011. I mean, it goes dead. This uh, all over the place. Uh, but for us, 2018 new release, new parts, um, which is a bit confusing because when they say new release, they don't actually mean um, a brand new release. As far as I'm understand it, it's just it's a new release. Um, um, it doesn't say new box, but it looks like a new box. Um, it says new parts. So I don't know. I don't fully understand the uh, timelines and histories of the of where they put you know what goes where and what these what these actually mean when they say uh, new parts new some of them are obvious new boxes a new box new decals is new decals but um, sometimes they put new parts and people take that to mean it's a new kit or new tooling. Um, Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. I don't know. Anyway, so that's a little bit about the history of it. Um, it's a lovely little jet. Gotta say, uh, it's gonna look really nice. Uh, I don't think it's a very big jet. Anyway, it's side opening. Uh, again, I don't like side opening boxes, never have. They don't stack very well, they tend to crumple at one end. Um, So let's just start that down there a minute. Here's my artwork for the uh, for the live review. Copyright protected, shitty titles, two thousand and eighteen, uh, and so. Let's have a look at the decals first, because let's have a look what they're like. Now, I know I primarily bought this because um, I've seen uh, Michael uh, Kreutzmann. He uh, is a chap from Germany. He's, he's in our 
is on our group, in our group, sorry. And uh, he comes in our hangouts most nights when they're on. And he does a lot of uh, tiger meat work. And this is what kick-started this whole thing off. And then suddenly this Arctic tiger turns up, which is not technically tiger meat, uh, as I understand it. But, you know, it's was, it was close enough for me. Um, and he does all these uh, tiger meat by hand. It, you know, even the ones where he gets the decals, he does not by hand. And um, I'm not going to be that brave, I'll be honest. Um, you should pop along and have a look at his work. Uh, his channel is... Um, no... Uh, hobby to me or so i can't remember i'll have to find out and put a link in the description i did know it about 10 minutes ago uh but now i've forgotten it again anyway um so he does all this by hand all the artwork by hand i've seen him do it and it's uh, it's really a stunning stuff that he does um but that is a beautiful deco sheet lots of um tiny little decals to go on but uh if you enjoy decaling it's not a problem if you don't like decaling then i can see that you wouldn't really you don't really want to get behind this so to speak there we go let's try and didn't have a very good focus before We've got a bit of a rolling picture on the um, screen. I don't know whether that's coming through as a rolling picture. Hopefully not. It's what? There we go. Hi, Joe. Yeah, Joe, if you could contact me privately. Um, some point later on today, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Anyway, they're the, they're the decals. They're really nice. Um. Now we come to the destructions. Now, because of the way my camera's set up, I've got to look at these upside down. Um, now, I know a lot of other people go through this step by step. Um, I tend to think that um, most of you know all this better than I do. So I'm just going to, you know, do the highlights version we got the paint colours there. They start there. So we've got quite a few colours. And interestingly, when you look on the sides of the boxes on most kits now, they'll give you a list of colours of about eight colours that you need. But then when you get the box open and you, you, know, you go and buy your colours based on what's on the outside of the box, but then you open the manual and you find that there's an additional 10 um, that they haven't told you about, which is annoying. Um, I don't know whether they've done that on this. Let's have a look. It's going to prove me wrong now, and there's going to be a there's going to be a full list now to prove me wrong. But there they are. There they are. So let's. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten colours. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one's a double colour. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, yeah, there's an additional eight on that one. Um, I counted that one twice, so you could say seven then. Yeah, uh, well, that's annoying to say the least. Uh, so we're not using all the parts. In fact, there's quite a few parts not being used. In virtually all of uh, Sprue H is not being used. 
and we get started straight away. Yeah, you got a screw maps. There we go. Usual start for Jets cockpit. Um, come through. We've got lots of uh, cutting to be done here, apparently. Wow, I've never seen that much cutting indicated in early on. Um, so I don't know what that is. Like just the holes drilling and looking through. There's lots of these uh, little, you know, cut here. Do not glue. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to pay attention on this one. So we get, you know, it's all front cockpit coming together and the, the rear stabilizers and the wings going on and you know so on and landing gear this this is all stuff you've uh you know better than i i'm just looking for anything that might be um different from the norm so it's this awful amount to this let me just find i don't think that does that, that mean it actually mean cut off because i've never seen that many different symbols uh Yeah, it is. It is. I've never seen that many pieces got to be removed in one kit. Maybe other people have. I haven't. I was, uh, these are bombs and missiles and that going together now. These are the racks underneath, tanks and so forth. They're going on. This is normally where I have trouble where things start to go wrong with the bombs because they don't look symmetrical when they go on or they look a bit messy. Um, so that's, I've got to sharpen my game up there. And then we've got this beautiful uh, white and black pattern, which looks more silver and black on the decals. You know, I'm I'm tempted to maybe even try to paint that. We'll see. And then, oh, the masses of decals that have got to go on. That is a lot. That will take some time. Whoa, in the bottom. So, no, we've got two different. So you can either have plain dull grey all over. Oh, no, no, no. Or you can have... Uh, the Arctic Fox, which is what I shall be going with, and then the Declan all on the uh, like them ones there. GBU guided bombs, I guess. Yeah, laser guided bomb. So there we go. That is the instruction manual, which we'll go back in in a second and pop that there for now. And Let us open the, it's not a resealable bag that I can see, so I'm not going to, I've just changed the blade on my knife, I'm not going to dull it on that ceramic tile, and I haven't got the, uh, haven't got the uh, cutting mat out ready, so We'll just use the scissors this time. A lot of plastic in here, but as I've said, sprue H we don't use at all, hardly. So we'll take one at a time and we will add them to the rack. As they come off. Uh, so top one is the wings. And um, and straight away, this is why they, they pack all these, um, all these plastic sprues in together. And uh, B 
bearing in mind this is the top piece so um yeah all that's been rubbing on this is the bag and um so this is um, well you can see from let me move them out the way because oh got a photo etch there don't want to get that damaged i just want to move these just move that out of the way there we go just look at the uh, scuff marks and uh, scratches to that plastic yeah, you can see how that uh, oh look at that there on the edge there awful and that's uh, on the wings. I don't know how bad that's going to show through. Hopefully, that will not be. No, will be. Uh, doesn't feel. I don't know. There's, they they feel a bit more than just a surface mark. These ones here. Um, we'll see. And then there's it's the same on these. So not off to a great start. And on these, there's uh, the uh, the panel lines are okay. Yeah, there's some of these marks are they've sort of embedded themselves a little bit in the. So this is more than just a plastic bag that's been rubbing on here. Uh, my guess is they've been when they've been made wherever they are, they've been flung about a bit and maybe collided with other pieces before they've been bagged up. Um, because the inside. The inside, what the parts that have been rubbing on other plastic parts are fine, really. Um, they're not that bad at all. Uh, we'll know when we get see that that one looks quite bad, but I, that will be okay. And that one looks quite bad, but it's these little. Um, it's not so much them big areas that look. It's these little scratches. There's a couple there. You can feel them when you run your finger over them. Um, and there's a lot of detail uh, in that area, uh, which I can maybe rub down some of these and get rid of them that way. Um, we'll see. But uh, so they, they are the wings, and they're tiny. It's, I know it's 148, so it's a very small jet, this. Uh, second sprue is uh, these are some bombs and tanks. Nice level of detail on the the tanks, bombs, whatever they are. There we go. If we let me just try and it's always a pain in the ass trying to get a decent. Um, decent focus sometimes you're better off with a low light and sometimes you're better off with no light at all yeah, not this occasion though i don't think so let's go to the low light um what i need is let's use uh, that's shiny that's no good Keep meaning to get a bit of black card to use, but um, keep failing to uh, remember to get it. So, yeah, they look pretty good. 
Nice level of detail on them. I know it struggles to see it. There we go. All the way along now you can see it from front to back. Access panels and so on. And then we've got the fins. The pylons that sit underneath. I think these are the tanks here. Yeah, they're the tanks. So, I'll catch up with the text in a minute with the chat. So, then uh, we come on to sprue number. This says BC on it. So, uh and we've got the, I'm guessing that's the front um, wheel well, uh, at a guess. And then we've got some beautifully detailed wheels, I've got to say. Uh, looks like they've got, uh, they're weighted. Look at that really nice you've got the landing gear really nice level of detail on the landing gear as well that is fantastic so um so far we've only got that little little problem with the the, the wing surfaces which you know uh, probably get uh, resolved with some microfiller or something we'll see how that goes um some more missiles. These, I believe, are the laser-guided bombs. There we go. I think they're the laser guide bombs. Some more pylons. Um, I'm not sure what they are. I'm not sure what they are at all, but uh, maybe some sort of air brake. I don't know. At a guess, I'd say. Got some interesting detail on the reverse side of the fins. I've never seen that before. Uh, that's new. I've never seen anything like that before. Normally they're just plain. I'll pop that on there. We do the clear one last. Then we have, it looks like we might have some duplicates. Yeah, this is a duplicate set of the last one we looked at, with the exception we've got a nose cone on here, uh, which we don't have on the other one. And might be some sort of... Uh, I'm not sure. So, no, it's not exactly identical looking at it. Just bear with me. No, it's not exactly identical. So, we've got another choice of wheels. Are they the... They're slightly different, aren't they? Yes, they're slightly different, so I'm going to show them. Now, these are not weighted, I don't think. No. More landing gear. Uh, some more wheel options there. It's an odd-looking cutout there for the wheels. Like a key, like a keyhole. And then 
there's another that looks like um this isn't sprue h is it by any chance because this looks like a lot of the stuff that i've already covered if this isn't sprue h maybe that last one was now that's m okay that's m We've got some. I've done a really good job with the detail. I've got to say. Um, it's, uh, what did I say? It was 1999, so 18 years old. Then we've got the rear stable, uh, rear fin stroke stabilizer. I'm not exactly sure. Rudder. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. And then we've got the cockpit. And no, is it the cockpit? I don't know. Um, I've built quite a few planes, but um, this one's different. It's got uh, so obviously the wings and the the reverse, uh, the stabilizer are the same, and, and things like that. But I'm on about. Um, I've never seen parts like this before here there's these two um i don't know what they are and then they just because it's tiny the dimensions are different it's odd but um uh, they're the burner cans at the back they're so tiny compared to the uh, phantom ones that I've worked on. And we've got some tiny, uh, look like uh, ammunition, rounds of ammunition there. But I don't know what they are. They're not rounds of ammunition. Missile heads, maybe. Um, we do have some missiles here that don't have uh, heads on them. Oh, we oh, nearly broke that off then. Gotta be careful. So they probably belong to them. Um, I think that's part of a cockpit. I'm not sure, but I think it is. So lots of tiny parts packed with um, some good detail. Oh, we've got a couple of pieces come away. Uh, I think these are probably something to do with the uh, rear burners and engines. Because looking down, you can see there's a fan in there. Um, they've obviously come off one of the sprues. I don't know if you can yeah there's a fan in there so they're obviously they attach to the the rear burners they are the rear burners or so. now we come to the all important um top and bottom And I've got to say, the detail on this does not disappoint at all. Um, amazing level. I don't know what this red... This is like a bit of foam under here to obviously protect these two little pegs. That um, I guess that's what that's for. There's like a bit of red tape and then under it's a block of foam. And the only reason I can see for it being there is there's a little peg alongside. It must be protecting that, surely. I don't know. 
Um, but the there's a massive amount of detail on here. And that's where all your decaling uh, is going to. All these little access points have all got to have, uh, you know, open here, do not open, danger, caution, warning, whatever. Look nice when it's got a wash over it. And I believe that is the top. I think that's the top. No, this could be the top. That could be the, that's the bottom, I think. That's the bottom. Yeah, that's the bottom. Sorry. This is the top. Turn that around. Again, nice level of detail. All the way through. Dog hair is uh, optional. But, uh, yeah, that's going to... That looks nice. And then we come around here, and I don't know what this is here. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Cockpit wall, side wall, underneath, I don't know. And then we've got uh, what looked to be maybe the seat. That's definitely the seat there. And then is that part of the seat, the back of it maybe? The If it will focus in. That might be the head headrest. Um, and I think this is another part of the, the... We've got the sides of the seat coming in there. So nice, nice uh, detail there. You can see the handles and the, 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 the wiring loom and that. And then um, I finally found the cockpit. I'm pretty certain now that's the cockpit. Again, if it's going to let us... Look at that. That's going to look really nice. Really, really nice when it's all, all put up. There we go. So that is, uh, they are the sprues. Now we've got the uh, clear one. Um, and we've got loose plastic bits floating around in here. So uh, not very optimistic on the condition of this. We have... No, I think it's just been not very well handled when it's been in the factory or wherever. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, no, the the it's a bit dog shit. The okay. Um, I mean, it's it's not the worst I've seen. You know, it looks okay like that. It definitely looks okay on the camera. It's only when you look at it. Um, it's only when it comes to trying to read writing through it. Ah, dreadful. It's all distorted. Um, let me see if I can show that in some way. Then you get an idea of, of uh, sort of how bad the clarity is. It's not brilliant. Um, 
and when you you sort of look at it under the light very closely there's uh there's imperfections in the plastic um And there's some little chips and marks underneath on the inside. And then we've got a lot of uh, clear parts here. I don't know what they're for exactly. Um, they'll be for lights and things like that. Many more than I've normally seen on other models. I don't know what they're for here. These uh, Christmas tree type. lights so there we go and then oh sorry we've got another one here um and i don't know what they're for either let me just so i mean uh it's only it's not rated a level five kit by Revel. It's rated level four. Um, yeah, it's got some more of the. Uh, it's a, I, I feel it looks a lot more complex than some of their level five kits that I've built. Um, I've, I've built a few of their level five kits, and and I, there's nowhere near as much uh, cutting, separating. Um, and all these different tiny parts like this. So, uh, I don't know. Well, no, because it's a, it's a challenge, isn't it? Uh, I think it, I, I might enjoy building this because it's got so many different bits I've never seen before. It's uh, a deviation from, um, you know, like when you build the same, if you build nothing but jets, um, and you build the same jets over and over again. So, like, you just build Russian jets. Uh, and it's the same things you're putting together all the time. Um, same if you do cars or anything else. If you just concentrate on the one thing, to me, that would be boring after a while. Uh, so this, this is uh, refreshing that it, you could do a jet and it would be completely different in its in the way it goes together, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense, but I know what I mean. Um, so there we go. That is the Rafa, uh, that's the Desalt Raphael C, um, by Revel. Just pop them back in there. I will put these away in a minute. I'll just come over and have a look at the, uh, chat and see what's going on. I'll start at the top because I didn't uh, read any coming in. Uh, so, Gary Pashley, don't believe everything you read on scale, mates. The Hella kit was based on the prototype and has nothing to do with the Rebel Germany kit first released in 1999. Well, thanks, Gary. That's a, uh, that, I've heard this before that you shouldn't believe everything you hear on scale, mates. Um, but that's, you know, you've got to go with what so you, you would think that scale mates would know, uh, should know what they're, they're printing. But I guess that it's like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is just uh, what people think is right and they send it in. I don't know whether it gets checked or, uh, or how true it is. Um, but you can guarantee if I was to come on, uh, for example, like Gary says, and said uh, that, that I would get a load of messages saying, you're wrong because on scale, mates, it says this. Um, but I totally agree with what Gary's saying. Um, it certainly sounds like he knows a lot more than I do. And so there we go. Uh, the the Hella kit was based on the prototype. Um, so, you know, you should get in touch with the scale, mates, and get that put right. Joanna comes in, says, hello. Um, then Kay, and then what have I done now? You've done nothing wrong, Joe. I just wanted to talk to you about something. You've done nothing wrong at all. Um, hides in the corner, I don't need to hide. One thing I've learned about colours so far, 
I have a nice selection of base colors, some specifics for large areas. Others, I just mix my own colors. Um, I'm not sure what I was talking about when you said that. Sorry? Yeah. Has this orange gone off? It seems lumpy. Yeah, I'm not going to drink that because I don't think that's right. I don't know because I, yeah. Um, uh, that Angela, uh, sorry, Joanna goes on to say she does like the Revel manuals. Yeah, they've done a good job with the new ones. Um, they're a lot better than they used to be, but then Airfix have done a good job with theirs as well. But if you want to talk about good manuals, the two kits you want to look at, um, Wingnut Wings, uh, their manuals are phenomenal, um, and also Zukimura. Now, Zukimura recently um, started changing their manuals, and not for the better, I, I feel. Um, when you used to get a Zukimura kit, the manual that came with it was like, oh, man, it was, a, it was superb. One of the best um, manuals I have ever seen. In fact, not one of the best manual I've seen so far on any kit I've bought has been for my Zukimura Sky Raider. Um, and I've got the review for that um, on my channel. Uh, don't look at the first one because it's uh, rubbish. Uh, the camera wouldn't focus or anything. It was done very early on. Uh, have a look at the second one when I came and redone it, when I got some better stuff. Uh, and you'll, you can see instantly from that what a superb manual that is they used to knock out. But I think they've tried to make them um, less uh, complicated, I guess. Uh, they're not as much detail in them, I don't think. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I didn't like the way they went with that. Uh, Joanna then goes on to say she has a look at Tamir's F14, or I should have a look at Tamir's F14. Lots of removal and drilling. I think I've got one of them in the stash. Um, yeah, I don't, I've never, I've, I've got a couple of Tamir kits. I've never really built. Um, the Tamiya kits apart from the cars uh, cars and bikes I've not done a plane yet in Tam Tamiya um, or a tank Rob says hi um, da -da -da -da. some of the modeling does look rather soft not very well defined um, I don't know let me have a look because I didn't think it looked that bad um, If we go, if we take the, yeah, so looking at the cockpit, um, I suppose, yeah, there's they could be, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just go in and look at the seat belt. I don't know. What do you think? What does everyone else think? Let me come and have a look at the cockpit. If I can get it, oh, if I can get it to focus in. So it's one of those things, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess that's... Uh, I would... Uh, I guess it could be a little bit better. Um, it certainly doesn't 
think it doesn't seem to me to be too bad um but we will uh you know look at that when it goes together see see whether it when it's together it looks uh that way I'm just sorry i've got a uh, got, got a load of things popped up on the screen now that's covering my chat so i can't see what people are saying Right. Uh, so then Joe goes on to say about the rear wheel well, your rear wheel well, not very well defined. Uh, all right. Okay. I'll have to have a look. Um, I'm not going to search through it now. Why do they put do that? Why put clear pieces, multiple sprues in the same bag? They are going to scratch each other. The one sprues that must be in separate bags. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And it's um, it's a constant source of frustration. And everybody says the same thing. So there's no way that they could possibly um, know any different. The, the, the companies must know what people are saying. Um, they must know that people, everyone's in agreement. Don't put them in all in the same bag like that. So, I, I guess it's a, a case of cost saving costs and, and and stuff like that. And like Angela says, uh, plastic and the environment. I don't know. Um, not too bad considering. Uh, it does, Joanne, it does look better on the screen than it does actually looking through it here. Um, I looked, I was looking at it on the screen and it does look quite clear when you look at it on the video, but, um, when, when you actually get it up in front of you, it's got like, you can see all these like lines in it. Um, and it, uh, like this multifaceted type look to it. It doesn't look very nice at all. Um, and then probably coming from this, oh, she's referring to what uh, I asked. Is that a Revel Germany kit? Um, so, uh, how do I tell, first of all? Yes, it is. Revel Germany, sorry. And it's got on the side. I don't know if that means anything. Yeah, the seats do look nice. Uh, she was talking more about the panel lines on the main body. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I was, I, so, yeah, yeah. I was gonna agree with you on that, Joe. They they are a bit, a little bit soft and not not as sharp as as other. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you, I'll give you that one, yeah. Um, and Rob, I paid... I got this through uh, Mike Jolly, and his uh, link is in the description below, and I paid... I think I paid 27. I'm not sure whether I paid 27 or it was 27 and it was a special offer and I paid just a bit over 20 for it. Um, it was a limited special offer. I remember that. Um, I'm just trying to find the receipt for it. Yeah, I normally keep the receipts together. Um, I'll have to try and find it out, uh, Rob. But it was definitely, at the most, £27. But I've got a funny feeling it was like 27 down to 23 something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's about the, the going rate for it. Yeah. Yeah, so Joe's right. You could probably get it for around 20 if you dig around on uh, eBay or YouTube. Um, 
YouTube. Oh, not YouTube, sorry. Um, Amazon. Anyway, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, we've got a Jody Blackwell. Uh, sorry, Jody, I did ask, answer your question about the uh, Zach Kit Rebel. I've uh, not seen your name in here before. Um, thanks for stopping by and watching. I uh, hope to see you in here a lot more. Um, yeah, I haven't bored you. Because I've been going now for 55 minutes. There was a, a question up this morning. They reckon they should all be done in 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Um is, is what they reckoned I'm um, way over that so I said it I said to the guy that put that you, you won't like my reviews then <laughs> anyway so thanks for watching uh that was uh the revel d'assault Raphael C in 148 scale um again the kit number should you want to get it is 03901 um and uh that's about it Thanks for watching. Don't forget, uh, we'll be back on with the show Wednesday night, assuming assuming that my teeth have been sorted out by them. Um, and uh, don't forget also that we've got our Russian build on. Uh, the prize for that is the um, the snippers, the single bladed snippers from Dispay, Dispay, I think it's pronounced. Um, very much sought after snippers. They're very high quality. Um, currently taking the modeling world by storm, I would say. Um, everybody's uh, impressed with them. So if you fancy winning a pair of those, just enter our Russian build competition. Just build something Russian. And uh, if you win, you'll win yourself a pair of those. Um, and they're pretty hard to get hold of as well. Oh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.